Welcome to the Valley of Death, where everything is spooky, but we keep things light. As you can see, I'm not currently in the house at the moment. I really wanted to get out and stretch my legs. You know, it's been a long time since I've actually been out of the house, you know, thanks to COVID and everything. And I thought, hey, you know what? Why not just take a little walk around the countryside? And then before I knew it, some weird kids were... Uh, trying to lure me into the this cornfield, talking about some weird person about he who walks behind the rose, and me as an adult idiot thought it would be a great idea to go ahead and just, well, just go in because, you know, I thought, you know, what could be safer than just following a bunch of creepy kids talking about some ominous figure? made worse decisions in life. Since I'm stuck here in the cornfield, and while well, there's really no sign of me being able to get out anytime soon, I thought, hey, you know, why not just, you know, sit here in this, you know, comfy chair and talk about children of the corn. I could think of other reasons to talk about children of the corn, but I thought this was a really fitting scenario. Children of the Corn! It came out in 1984, and it is based off of one of Stephen King's horror short stories. It's a really interesting story, as it really dives into the whole aspect of religion, and what really constitutes what is right and wrong within religion. I mean, it doesn't really get super deep about it. Honestly, the message is quite simple when we get to the end of the movie, but to be honest, it is still something a little bit interesting to analyze. Obviously, the idea of creepy children had been done many times before, but this is actually one of the movies that people really tend to point to when it comes to, oh, this is what really sparked creepy kids. And, well, I can kind of understand why, but I think there are far better movies that actually do deal with the whole creepy kid aspect. But I would be lying if I said this is not what really helped along with that trend. Well, we're going to be here for quite a while, so let's go ahead and watch Children of the Corn. And yes, the children did provide me with a TV, so at least that was very nice of them. Our story starts off in the town of Gatlin, where everybody is leaving their Sunday service and heading off to the diner. As you do, where we have our little narrator here called Joey explaining to us some weird stuff that could potentially be going on in the town. I was the only kid in church that day. The others were with Isaac out in the cornfield. That's when I saw Malachi and the others. They were acting real creepy. Okay, so far, so good. We have our little setup here. We're off to the diner. A whole bunch of kids are coming in, and no one is suspecting a darn thing when they are locking the doors and getting a whole bunch of sharp objects out. Okay, I know this is a, like weirdly, probably sheltered, you know, Christian conservative town and everything, but... People aren't this stupid or unaware of what's going on in life, right? Oh, wait a minute, never mind. And so the murder spree begins because you know how kids are. <laughs> Then Joey goes on to explain that his sister is psychic as she's drawing these pictures to go ahead and explain the events that are happening. It happened everywhere in Gatlin that day. That's when Sarah started drawing these pictures. Okay, so are you going to explain maybe how she might be psychic? Oh, here are the opening credits! Never mind! To be fair, I actually do like these opening credits. That might be a little bit of a weird thing to go ahead and say, but... The art of opening credits has really kind of changed throughout the years. Now, instead of having this really eerie kind of opening with like the creepy music, the pictures, and all that stuff, instead, usually with most movies, it's just, okay, here's the opening, and uh, the credits will just be kind of laced over at the beginning, or heck, sometimes you won't even get any of the credits until the end of the movie. So, honestly, I do kind of appreciate this kind of opening where we'll have like a kind of a cool, intense opening 
where then we are switched over to the credits to kind of have everything just settled in with how creepy and everything is. I mean, granted, it's not really an absolutely terrifying opening, but it does its job. Oh boy, I wonder what's going to happen. I'm on the edge of my seat! <laughs> Happy birthday! Oh cool, I love fake outs! This is Vicky and Bert, played by Linda Hamilton and Peter Horton. We have a birthday serenade. I do have to say, I really do kind of like their relationship. I mean, it's not like the best on-screen chemistry you can get in a movie, but honestly, it does its job pretty well, and they do have some honestly pretty decent and yes very cheesy chemistry together so their relationship does feel a little bit on the authentic side after getting not really a lot of character development with these two we cut back to the kids as some of them are really starting to suspect that their leader isaac is well a little crazy he was pretty scared oh you don't say well you just better mind him till i get back or else, you know what happens. Please tell me that again as you look at the camera. Okay! Go! Nobody's looking! Nobody's looking! <laughs> yeah, don't worry, kid. Nobody is going to know that you ran off. So, eventually, the kid runs into the cornfield, and oh, yeah, he's dead. Oh, what a shocker. I thought he was going to live. <laughs> so, Vicky and Bert are driving along, and... Go! Oh, yeah, he's definitely dead. But don't worry, right before he died, he said that he believed in he who walks behind the rose. This is a moment to rejoice. That was an animal, right? <laughs> yeah, honey, that clearly was an animal. So Bird decides to go ahead and take a look around just to make sure that, you know, there are no other kids or parents or just, you know, whatever. And Linda notices that, oh, look, creepy kids in the corn. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so her walking around with all the kids that she never met was just a dream? They drive away where they cut to Sarah and Joey, our little narrator and his sister from earlier. I do have to say, even though their acting isn't that fantastic, they do feel a bit like authentic kids. The only weird thing about these kids is SHOULDN'T THEY BE TRAUMATIZED?! I mean, with all the insanity that these kids went through, these kids are way too normal and happy. You'd figure that, I don't know, maybe they'd be a, just a tad bit more brainwashed and less... Happy kids! However, Malachi says no to happy hour, and then we cut back to our power couple, debating what they should do and what exactly happened to the boy. Getting tired of that crap. Now, you probably noticed at this point, there's been a lot of anti-religious aspects going on in this movie. And it's not that the movie is basically giving off an anti-religious message but it is very interesting you know just how they're really trying to nail the whole evangelical aspect of you know evangelical christianity is just the most vile and evil thing ever and i mean if you watched any pure flicks film you'd probably agree with me but that's not the point the point is, is that I think the message is just a little too heavy-handed, especially when we get back to the kids and, well, how insane they are. Speaking of which, Malachi then delivers the kids to Isaac to let him know of their vile deeds of playing Monopoly. I mean, Monopoly is the number one board game to really break up families, so I can understand why their religion wouldn't accept it. But they had a game in music. They're forbidden. They were listening to newsboys. My ears were bleeding from the unholy noise. However, Isaac explains to Malachi that these two kids can basically do whatever they want because the little girl has, well, special abilities, I guess. You have the gift of sight. This is a blessing, my child. She called it shiny. Vicky and Bert continue on their way when they come across this guy. Oh, we've had I ain't got no gas. 
No, I don't, I don't need gas. You ain't got no diesel fuel, neither. I no gas, you can't use no restroom. You need to use your phone. Telephone, I ain't got no telephone. Who, so far, I just have so many questions about him. Like, why on earth did the kids keep him alive? Why did this one adult not leave and call the FBI? I get that maybe the kids could use him for a few things, but I don't get why he's compliant. So the guy tells our power couple to get lost and they still kill him? Come on. Why? He didn't do anything. So our heroes get lost, and one thing I do actually really love about this movie is the music. It really just has that really great 80s vibe to it, while being eerie and really intense at certain moments. I, I don't know, there's just something about it that I really do genuinely enjoy. So we cut back to the kids who are now in the cornfield, and oh, it's just your normal evangelical prayer service. And the Lord did show all this to me. Praise God! Praise the Lord! So, the best part about this movie is Isaac, played by John Franklin. John puts on such a captivating performance that it's no shock that all these kids are following him, to be completely honest. And it's incredible how good he is. The Lord did come to me, and he was a shape. It was he who walks behind the rose. So take you his life and spill his blood. But let not the flesh pollute the corn. Cast him instead upon the road. Fun fact about John Franklin, he's actually 25 in this movie. He grew up with a growth hormone deficiency, which kept him from growing properly and honestly aging a little bit more slowly. He looks and acts exactly like a kid in this movie. He is ridiculously convincing, and I love him in this movie. He is absolutely fantastic. And just as the blue man was offered up unto him, so shall be the unbeliever. Bert and Vicky continue to look for help in the town, but don't seem to get anywhere until they come across this old house and finally find someone. Honestly, the biggest problem with this movie is the fact that it's based off of a short story. You can't have a movie this long based off of a short story and then expect us to be like really enthralled when you have moments like this, where our heroes are just aimlessly walking through the town of Gatlin, just trying to figure things out. The filmmakers probably thought that these were moments of like building up suspense as they're going through the town. Once in a while, a weird thing may happen, or they'll come across maybe a group of kids who immediately run away or something like that. But to be honest, it's just boring. It's no surprise that they had the length in the movie, but holy crap, actually add something! At this point, I'm waiting for Freddy Krueger to show up just because I want to fall asleep during these parts. That's not an invitation. That is not an invitation, Freddy. Are your mommy and daddy around? They're in the cornfield. Oh, what are they doing there? All the grown-ups are there. <sighs> Insert fertilizer joke here. Bert, once again, goes off to find somebody. Things just aren't happening fast enough. You can say that again, Bert. Finally, Vicky gets kidnapped and Bert makes his way to the church to stumble upon this. Now the blood of Amos will be shared. This is not necessarily a bad part, as we actually do get a little bit of a sneak peek as to what the kids actually believe in, what their religion is based off of, and just a bunch of other, well, honestly, just kind of creepy things. But the whole reasoning behind what these kids believe is really looked over way too quickly. Bert goes on to talking about them just picking and choosing what they want from the Bible to basically suit their own needs. So what do you mean, as it is written? Written where? What, in this? Are you rewriting the whole thing or just the parts that suit your needs? Where in the Bible was there a corn god? Now, this is honestly a really good moment, which, honestly, it's a pretty darn good statement. There are a lot of Christian groups out there which, yeah, might read the whole Bible, but they only really pick what they want to hear. But the issue here, other than there's a weird corn demon, is we know nothing about this weird religion. I like the mystery behind it, but some things do need to be explained. Your presence does profane this holy place. 
He will reckon with you. This girl is literally every Karen on the parish council. Bert makes a run for it as an angry mob of children attack him. So I'm pretty sure that was real. What makes these kids so threatening again? How violent can these kids be when it's so easy to push them over? However, Malachi and some of the other kids are getting a little bit tired of Isaac and the way that he's running things. You will fight on apart from us! Seize him! Punish him! Cut him down! I command you! I am the word and the giver of his laws! Oh, come on! You guys are getting tired of Isaac? I would follow Isaac! They take him away, threatening to sacrifice him to he who walked behind the rose, where Bert finally runs into Sarah and Joey, taking him to Vicky. Finally, we're nearing the conclusion of the movie, where the kids are about to sacrifice Isaac to he who walks behind the rose. And to be completely honest, well, things start getting really weird. I did it, you come back in. So instead of every kid trying to attack Bert, only Malachi does, and this scene is honestly amazingly hilarious. And so we end with the moral lesson of our movie. Any religion without love and compassion is false. Congratulations, children of the corn. You were able to find the right message that every Pure Flix movie seems to miss. I'm so proud. Holy crap, he's still alive. He wants you too. All sticking up. He wants you to. And that is the face of a kid who crapped his pants. After this part, not necessarily because of the ending itself, but because it's so quick and full of conveniences that it's rather hard to believe. You know, other than the corn demon. So how do we kill the corn demon? The blue guy knew. How did he know? He talked to the preacher. What did the preacher know? He read a page from the Bible. Oh, you have that page right here? What does the verse mean? Set the field on fire. No shit. So the field is set on fire and... What the hell was that? What about this makes this cartoon screaming explosion the thing that we were supposed to be scared of? This isn't scary! This is hilarious! Yeah, I'll make it. Got a great doctor. <laughs> Jealous? Ew. Yada yada, funny banter, then they head on their way and the... <laughs> And you know what? That's how the movie ends. That's it. It's like they didn't know how to actually end this bloody movie. So many horror movies have done the final jump scare so much better than this. Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Black Christmas, Carrie, a Stephen King movie, mind you. What the hell was that? To quote another Stephen King movie, the only thing that matters is the ending. It's the most important part of the story, the ending. And you screwed it all up! Children of the Corn is a really odd movie for its time. I personally do actually really enjoy this movie, but it has so many weird 
issues with it that they're kind of really hard to ignore when you're watching the whole product on its own. And the fact that this one little short story turned into a huge bloody Children of the Corn franchise is way beyond me. It's just so bloody odd. I can't ignore some of the good things about this movie, such as the music, the acting, honestly, with our two leads is pretty good, and a lot of the kids, although are not fantastic, they put a lot into their roles for this movie, and they do a fantastic job. And of course, you cannot ignore Isaac. Isaac is such a fantastic character. He's honestly one of my favorite horror movie villains of all time. However, this is definitely not one of Stephen King's best movie adaptions. I honestly would recommend it for you guys to just go ahead and take a look at it, because it is honestly considered a horror classic, but there are a lot of reasons here which I would kind of have to kindly disagree on calling this movie a classic. But if you want to go ahead and get lost in the cornrows and watch this movie, I'd say go right ahead for at least quite a few laughs and a little bit of tension. This has been the Valley of Death, where everything is spooky, but we keep things light. Now, if you excuse me, I have to get out of this cornfield.